Hi, my name is Kevin from Moonlight Mantids, and today uh, we're going to talk. We're going to do Q and A number five. I actually looked at my uh, YouTube comments for the first time in a while, and there are a lot of good questions on there. I actually haven't um, looked at it in a while, and a lot of this is repetitive, and I'm just going to go over it. And uh, some of it's new, though, stuff I wouldn't have thought to uh, answer. So I'm just going to go ahead and down the list and read them. And then we're going to do a, a winner of an art contest, which you've already been emailed. Congratulations. Thank you for sending the art. We are still doing that, so uh, keep on sending that. Uh, praying mantis drawings, uh, whatever it is, uh, you want to win a free mantis and a kit. And uh, feeders, you just uh, go ahead and go ahead and, uh, visit www.moonlightmantis.com. Jesus, I'm slurring. It's probably all that metal in my mouth. Anyway, um... Just uh, visit, and uh, there's a, a shipping address on there you can uh, go ahead and send your art to and uh, possibly win some free stuff. Otherwise, uh, you can just order, whatever. Um, anyway, just send us your art, and we're, we're going to keep doing that. So, yeah, any, anyway, these are the YouTube comments, and I'm going to go ahead and read them for you. Um, Michelle Fox, hi. I have several Theca for Chinese mantids, but I have been searching high and low for an orchid mantis or an orchid mantis utheca. Do you know where I can get one? Uh, I want to broaden my hobby, and my kids love watching them eat. Well, uh, Michelle, um, I, uh, you have some Chinese youth, and you want to go straight to orchids. I hear that a lot. Everyone wants orchids. I want orchids. I have some orchids. Um, I, there's a massive problem with the orchids. You better have a few years worth of experience before you try to keep any. Some people are lucky off the bat. I don't know. Most people are not. Finding them is really tough, and when you do find them, usually you're gonna pay a little, you're gonna pay some, you know, a decent amount of money for them, and then you're probably just gonna kill it because you're not experienced enough. So I'm not gonna tell you where to find one, um, except for maybe my website when I have them, and uh, unless I know you have some experience, I don't. I might not even sell you one. You know what I mean? If I only have a few dozen, I'm just I probably privately message people that I know are looking for them that have some experience. Um, the reason we can't find more orchid mantids is because people buy them as fast as they can find them, if they can find them, which is it's really rare to find any, especially Uth. Um, and what happens is they go into inexperienced hands and then they kill them. So you're going to go from a Chinese mantis to an orchid. It's not a good idea. I'm sorry. Um, I hope eventually you get there. Yeah, you want the most beautiful this and that. It's not the most beautiful uh, or easy care. That, uh, that there is, you know, you just, you know, yes, it's pretty, but you're, you know, it's, it's, you're just going to spend a lot of money, you kill it, and then, you know, somebody who might be breeding it and making it more available isn't going to get it, and then, you know, you're not going to find any more, and the reason we still don't find any is because nobody seems to pay attention or care. Uh, they're just going to put some money down, take it, kill it, whatever. I'm not saying you would kill it. You probably wouldn't. You probably would. I don't know. I don't know your experience level. Don't, don't buy an orchid mantis right away. Buy like a few giant Africans or giant Asians or go somewhere else than just the Chinese. You might want to start with like a flower species and then go into into orchids. And uh, I almost swore. Sorry. Um, just just don't do it. Don't do it yet, please. Uh, if you find it, uh, please resist. Um, you know, it's it's for the best. You're just going to spend a lot of money and, and kill the poor thing. You know what I mean? Just, just wait a little bit longer, get a few other species and then get yourself some orchids or you message me and be like, Oh, I've had these, these, and these, and I'm ready for some orchids. And I'm like, what do you think? Ah, I think you're ready to, and I'll send you some, or I'll, you know, I'll, I'll tell you where you can get them. Um, right now, uh, very few people actually breed them regularly. And, uh, so sorry, I don't know anyone. Wink. Um, I got another question here from, uh, Dep Andra YouTube name. Uh, awesome video. We would like to meet you. Uh, you look like an interesting person. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we found a large four to five inch praying mantis last fall and let her live in a small amber lampshade from Poland. I guess you're from Poland. Um, we have many uh, we have many videos of her eating and playing. She lived in her home on her lamp for a couple months and had two theca. Uh, which we put in the refrigerator two days ago. We took them out and made an aquarium with sticks uh, therein. Uh, we now see that uh, we sh uh, we need to put some cloth in our homemade screen with homemade screen and duct tape around the aquarium. We wonder now if perhaps the 10 gallon is too large. Okay, so you got uh, this mantis that laid some ooth. You put them in the fridge. You decided you want to take them out of the fridge to hatch them. And you're asking me if taping a bunch of... Uh, screen with duct tape around the top 
is going to be a good lid and if it's too large. I think it's too large. Um, I think you're going to let them hatch out of there. And if you've refrigerated them properly, if it's a species that can refrigerate, um, if it's native to Poland, and I'm assuming Poland gets cold and has a winter, then I'm guessing you could easily keep it in the fridge until you're ready to hatch them. Um, it sounds like it would be messy, and you're going to hatch them out of there, and you're just going to have very, very few that live until eventually you probably have none. I'm thinking hatch them. You can hatch them in there. Take a few out and separate them, as many as you want, and then see if the ones that you kept separated, feeding on uh, fruit flies, do better than the ones you kept in the tank. And uh, let us know in the comments how that went, but uh, I wouldn't put all my eggs in that basket. Um, 10 gallons does seem a bit too large, um, depending on what you're planning on doing with them. Um, I might have done something similar 10 years ago <laughs> with the 10 gallon, and then uh, I, it didn't end well. So... Um, I think uh, put a few aside and raise them separately and make sure you give them a good shedding surface and watch my videos and uh, you'll, you'll know what to do. And um, just and then whatever's left, I would leave them in that tank and, and see how it goes. Maybe, you know, the tank is successful, maybe it's not. Just uh, don't, um, don't hope that uh, it all works out in the ginormous tank with hundreds of nymphs and uh, probably might only have a few left in there at the end of the day. I don't know what you're planning on doing really. But a decent question. Sounds like something a lot of people would do. Uh, this one is from Jay. Uh, he says, this is going to sound stupid, I know, but can they bite people or something? I'm sure they can. They got a mouth, you know. They could. I guess they could pinch you or whatever. And I hear a lot of things like, oh, it nibbled my finger. Or, or you know, it, uh, it poked me. Some guy said, oh, they could stab you. Eh, I don't know. I, I, they're harmless insects. It's not going to hurt you. I guess it could bite you. I have thousands, and I've kept them for many, many, many years, and I've never been bit, punt, uh, bit pinched uh, or anything like that, and uh, I don't, so I'm going to say no. No, they're not going to do that to you. In case it does, you know, get some footage of that, and then be like, look, deadly mantis, oh my god, you know, do I need to suck the venom out? And then you could ask me that question on YouTube next time. Um, Red Moon Exotics. Uh, hey, Kevin, I had a... Hatch of Chinese ooth and I su uh, supplied them with fruit flies and made sure they had eight. But when I got back from school on Monday, uh, I saw they had all died. Is there any reason behind this? Thanks. Um, I'm guessing they hatched and they were L1s. <sighs> There's some mosquitoes in here. Sorry, it's late. Um, and it sounds like they were L1s. And, uh, man, they all died. Uh, I guess it's probably because they didn't have any water. A lot of people say, oh, I don't even give them water or anything like that. They need a little bit of water. Um, you need to miss them, and uh, leaving them alone for a weekend um, uh, when they're freshly hatched and probably didn't have fruit flies the entire weekend, and depending on what it was in, you know, um, it also depends on the species. Some of them just have a massive die-off, but more than likely they dehydrated. Um, they got too warm or too cold. That could have killed them, too. I don't know if, you know, your school was cold or if it was too hot or whatever happened. They, they you know, they died, could have died of exposure. Um... If they're next to an air conditioner, you know, something like that. I don't know. They can get too cold and die quickly. Um, but as L1s, they need a lot of attention at least every other day. So leaving them for a weekend isn't a good idea. When you get L2s, L3s, L4s, you can leave for a weekend and not take and not pay any attention to them. And they'll be fine. But as L1s, you kind of kind of want to be there at least till they get through one or two sheds. And then you can leave for a weekend and say, oh, okay. So anyone who's asking, oh, what do I do with my mantids when I leave? Put some food in there, make sure they have some water, and you just leave. And then you come back and take care of them. And they'll be perfectly fine. Um, just so you guys know. Decent question though. Um, could have been exposure, dehydration. Um, hoping you know, probably could have been fruit flies. Could have been the setup. I, I really don't know. Anything could have happened. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. We got another question here. Uh, Shanna FH. My last eleven imps died yesterday. I had quite a lot, about twenty to thirty, but they all died. My longest record is two weeks after a molt. Uh, I guess that's the oldest ones that you've managed to raise. I did see you um, and asked you how to take care of these 11 um, without using fruit flies. We don't get fruit flies in my country. Um, okay, um, I guess you could use uh, pinhead or, or one or two day old or three day old crickets, like really tiny, tiny crickets. Um, depending on the species, you could use springtails. Um, micro mealworms work, which are, um, uh, I guess, larvae from uh, lesser mealworm beetles. All those things are kind of hard to culture and keep a lot of, um, but you can do it. Um, and uh, I, my recommendation for that is um, I would try to find fruit flies or culture some of your own. 
um, if you have, and I've had a few people ask me this from other countries that they just they don't have fruit fly cultures or anything like that. There are fruit fly type flies in nature. Um, you what you can do is I like to use uh, when I uh, when I first started and uh, I didn't have any fruit fly cultures. I would get a big jar of something like peaches. I'd mash the peaches up or whatever kind of fruit you have. Peaches I I find work the best and just create hordes of fruit flies and you put them outside and hopefully it's summertime and within a few days there'll be just tons and tons of fruit flies there yes they fly but you can find them pretty much everywhere and if you have rotting or old fruit um, usually that attracts things like fruit flies or little flies which you can try to supplement if you're just trying to keep a couple and you don't want to culture stuff or you can't find any fly cultures you can't afford them or whatever um, you can just get some from nature and um, that usually works. Otherwise, uh, springtails, um, tiny, tiny crickets and mealworms, I, I don't really know. You know, it's uh, just, you know, you got to see what you can do with where you're at. Or mantids probably aren't the best hobby for you. Um, unless you can catch or find some, like, bigger ones that you can find, you know, throughout the summer. And then maybe raise those up on larger insects, like, uh, that you can find or that you have access to. But uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, good luck in the future. All right, uh, John Andrew, hey man, I got a new Orchid Mantis L3 currently feeding on fruit flies from a culture bought online. The supplier says they are melogaster, however they look bigger, like Heidi Eye, does it matter, thanks. Um, I say the bigger the better. Uh, the problem is, if it matters or not, Ken, is the orchid eating them? Is the, yeah, your Orchid Mantis actually eating the fruit flies? Uh, if so, then no problem. It actually works out. Then it was ready to upgrade to Heidi Eye anyway. Um, if you just have the melanogaster, you gotta ask yourself, okay, is they is he ca is it catching and eating them? If it is, then obviously you're fine. You know, maybe just feed more of them. Um, size doesn't really matter. Um, you don't want to feed Heidi Eyes to things like L ones usually because they're too small to tackle them. And even then, they actually can still tackle them. Um, it's just a larger f larger food item. So if you're finding that Heidi Eyes are too big for your mantis to tackle because the size then um, you want to switch to Melanogaster. But uh, either way, if they're eating what you got, it'll be perfectly fine. It's not a big deal at all. you probably upgrade to Heidi Eye anyway. Uh, I can't read this name. CBS Silly. Some YouTube name. I just, it's horrible. Uh, my eggs hatched yesterday. When do they start eating? You want to wait 12 hours. 12 hours after they hatch from the container they're in, leave them alone. Don't touch them. Don't miss them, nothing. Leave them alone for 12 hours to dry. They they come out, their exoskeleton hardens. After that point, they usually drink and then eat. Um, remember when misting, make sure it's very, very, very fine, atomized, um, if possible. That means like the little tiny, tiny squirters. Um, like, uh, like, ooh, right here. Like this, like this small. This is atomized, just, you know, really, really small. Not a big spray bottle, just you can't even see it. You know, it's just really really small and then uh, that's what they drink and only like one of those every day or every other day and then uh, some fruit flies and that's all you got to do um, but 12 hours after you wait 12 hours then you can start eating and drinking uh, you can wait a day after you separate them if you want to try to get them some water though so they stay hydrated um, Ethan Bailey so I have some Chinese 1.2 uh, mantises I guess you have a male and two females uh, I feed them Drosophila hydei, which Drosophila is the genus of fruit flies. Hydei is the species. Hydei are the large ones. Melanogasters are the smalls. Um, fruit flies and are doing well. Uh, one thing my friend told me that if you feed them a lot, they should molt every week or so. Is that true? Every week or so is true. So uh, within a, with, uh, about a week and then thereafter, yeah, uh, has it happened sooner? Um, I've had stuff. I've had L1s hatch within a week, um, but usually it takes about nine to ten days um, most of the time. After that, they slow down. So as an L2, L3, it could take two weeks, three weeks. You know, L4 it takes uh, four or five weeks. You know, um, maybe not that long. Maybe three weeks for a while. But then towards the end, there it can take it could take a couple weeks. It depends on your heat and like he, like your buddy said, how much you feed them. Uh, if it's warmer, you're feeding them a lot. They stay well hydrated. They're healthy. They could set, very, you know, sooner, but it does slow down as it progresses. So as L1, L2, yeah, it can take, it could happen in a week, but uh, it slows down. It's not going to happen every week. Um, so I wouldn't count on it. Um, feed them as much as they'll eat, of course. And then, yes, it will be faster, if that's what you mean. Um, uh, YouTube person, I did. That's the name. Uh, I see them every now and then in my backyard, but if I need more... 
uh, for pest control, how far do they travel? I was thinking of purchasing purchasing some for this reason. Is that reasonable? Yeah, it's reasonable. Praying mantises would make great pest control um, animals for your garden and, and as pest control. They don't travel very far within maybe a few hundred feet um, as actual uh, larval, uh, larvae. Uh, meaning uh, without wings or, or even if they're the wingless species. It, the non-adult forms don't travel very far. They just kind of hang out in their area. So long as they can eat food, they should pretty much hang out where they're at um, within your backyard and stuff. Um, make sure they're not too close to each other if you put some out there. Do not put non-native species into your yard. Don't go buy some Africans and put them in your yard. Don't put any giant Asians, no Hiradula, none of that stuff. Don't put it in your yard. You can get stagmomantids if you're in the U.S., um, which you can buy online and you put them in your yard for pest control. You can, oh, what you can do is look for native species that are already there and try to reproduce them for your yard or just catch them, catch them find them, and put them in your yard. I mean, it's up to you how you do it. Don't use non-native species. It'll be a horrible, horrible mistake. And if anyone ever caught you doing this and you got caught for introducing a non-native species, you will be captured and probably stoned. We will, we don't do that. We don't do that. You can take what's already there. You can look up to see what is there and I would ask you know, someone, you know, depending on where you live, what species are available, try to do some research on it and then see if you can't find anyone that has that species and then you can put those into your yard. I wouldn't hurt anything. I would say Chinese. I don't like the Chinese. They're everywhere and they're larger species. They're larger than U.S. species. So they compete, not 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 necessarily 100% compete. They're naturalized. They're okay. But they are larger and if it came down to a fight, uh, your Chinese mantis would win out over whatever you have there naturally. So try to find something that's native and natural first. If you can't and there's nothing, Chinese are okay. Go ahead and do it for now. I mean, I would try to one-up the situation and, and go for um, native species. But uh, if you can't find them, then uh, that's all right, too. Um, go ahead and use some Chinese for that. Uh, they're not going to go too far. In the fall, they're going to get wings, and they're going to fly away to find mates and stuff. Usually your females don't, but they can. Uh, your males fly all over the place and pick up pheromones to try to mate your females, and that's when they leave, which is like in the fall, which is like September um, here in Wisconsin. Could be sooner, wherever the, wherever you're at. You didn't tell me where you're at, or I would have told you what to use. Um, anyway, uh, Bobby Buck from YouTube also said, Can you feed mantids, uh, mantis adults on just mealworms, and can you keep nymphs on just fruit flies? I'm sure you can. Um, I'm sure if they got enough to eat um, and you just had those two items to feed them, I'm, I don't see a problem with it. Uh, mantids gen are generalists and uh, they eat pretty much anything. Uh, uh, if you only had the uh, mealworms, I don't see it causing any problems. Um, why don't you go ahead and do that and then message me and be like, oh, it was successful. You know, fruit. Uh, I don't feed anything except for fruit flies to my nymphs if they can eat them. And I don't really switch from that until they're adults or until they're large enough to eat other stuff. And I guess if you just use new worms, I guess that would be okay too. It depends. Um, go ahead and give it a shot and let us know. That would be nice. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tropical Aquatics. Um, this is uh, another YouTuber or YouTube comment I got. Uh, Thanks for the info. If I do get a mantis, I'll probably get a Chinese. I heard they do well in room temp. I have a 20 gallon tank in my basement. Would that be good for Chinese mantis? Um, also, I was thinking of getting creative and using sand as a substrate. I'll obviously put twigs and rocks in the enclosure and use heat packs during the winter, uh, like you. Uh, finally, should I wash my hands before handling my mantis? Well, wow, three really good questions. 20 gallon too big, I say for an adult and you putting enough feeders in there should be okay. Uh, for a nymph, probably not a really good idea. You want to raise them up to at least a sub-adult or adult level for a large 20 gallon tank, but I mean, it's up to you. You just pay close attention to it and to make sure it eats and drinks and then you might be fine. Um, using sand as a substrate, your substrates don't really matter as long as they have, you know, as long as it's relatively moist when they're going through their sheds. If it's an adult, sand wouldn't matter because they don't really need the humidity anymore. Um, just make sure they have plenty to drink, especially if it's a female because they're going to lay ooth and you want to stay hydrated or they're going to become egg bound, not be able to lay the ooth, which they make whether they mate or not and uh, die. So you want to make sure that you have uh, some moisture. The substrate doesn't really matter if you're misting them and stuff as nymphs, as adults. Just make sure they drink. You know, you don't have to mist them. Um, but uh, last question you had, uh, do I wash my hands before handling my mantis? Um... I don't know any diseases that are that are contracted from um, from mantids to people, and I don't see that being an issue. 
I would wash my hands no matter what because maybe you have a mantis and, uh, you know, it's, it, it's walking on surfaces that are unnecessarily clean and now you're handling it and now that's on your hands. That's a bunch of whatever. I mean, that's how a lot of insects and uh, animals contract or, or spread disease. It depends on where they're at. If it's in a cage and it's pretty clean in there, I mean, it's, you know, you don't have it a, a, in your bathroom or on a toilet, you know, and it's not stepping all over, you know, dirty bacteria and then you handling them and not washing your hands. I can see that being a problem. Um, you want to wash your hands before and after with anything just because it's good hygiene. Um, and, but I don't really see it being a major issue as praying mantids, uh, don't have salmonella. So as far as the art contest, um, I got one here that I really like. It's relatively recent from, uh, Theodore Salvador or nope, sorry. Uh, Salgado, sorry. It's Theodore Sal uh, Teddy Salgado, but Theodore, I guess is your full name. Um, anyway, you're going to win. You're going to get a free praying mantis and praying mantis kit. Uh, thank you for uh, sending uh, this wonderful drawn art right here. I hope you can see that a little bit better. Right there, isn't that nice? You got like a butterfly and a mantis and flowers and all that. Thank you very much. You're going to get a kit, fruit flies, and a nice basic mantis um, of your choice. I go, I'm going to go ahead and send you an email. Thank you for sending that. Please keep sending me more. Um, you visit www.moonlightmantids.com, have your parents' permission first, or hopefully you are a parent. Um, have your uh, kids draw up some pictures, and I'll go ahead and send them some man uh, mantis, and um, you, you know, 